Good morning, comic book fans. It's Rusty again with Collector Auctions, and here I am sitting in the car. I'm outside of Cards, Comics, and Collectibles in Reisterstown, Maryland, waiting for them to open up for the first day of their big Easter sale. Now, this sale, just to remind you guys what this is about, it is their annual Easter sale, obviously, but it is a huge discount for everything in the store, starting with the premium books at 30% off, modern back issues, 70% off, then you go to the trade paperbacks and hardbounds at all 50% off. Toys, Funkos, trading cards, everything has all kinds of discounts in here. I'm targeting specifically a handful of premium books. And if you guys got the chance to watch one of my, my previous episodes where I did the preview to this actual sale, you know what I'm targeting. There's a handful of books that I looked at that... I'm definitely going to be beelining towards as soon as that door opens. And that's one of the reasons I'm here so early. So I can be one of the first people in line and I can hopefully, hopefully those books are in the same spot and they haven't moved around a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to find the books I want. I'll do a little bit more exploring and then I will come back, get back to the house and I will show off anything that I buy today. What I am not going to do today is take any footage from inside the store because, frankly, I'm not going to have a lot of time in there to spend filming when I'm going to be digging for comics. So sit back. I'll be back in a moment, and hopefully we'll have some good books to show off. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, everybody. I just finished up at Cards, Comics, and Collectibles for their first day of their big Easter sale, and I picked up some big keys. And if you watched my preview show that I mentioned before, you will definitely know some of the things that I was going to get. And that's what I did. I ended up getting the ones that I really wanted at the top of my list. And I picked up a few other things too. So stay tuned. Let me get home and I will sit down and I will show you everything I picked up at this big sale. Much, much, much later. All right, everybody. So I only ended up going to the first day of the sale at Cards, Comics, and Collectibles over their four-day Easter sale. And if you watch my previous video where I talked about the books that I was going to be targeting at this shop. Well, I'll go over that because I was the second person in line and the first person was going in and he hadn't been there. He hadn't done a preview of what was in the shop. He was just going to explore. So I knew I was going to be okay heading right to the boxes where I had found some of these great keys that I showed you in the last video. The only thing was I'd have to try to make sure I found them. And luckily I did in most of the cases here and I will show you those books. But also remember this was Wednesday. It's new comic book day. And so I also picked up some new comic books from Cards, Comics, and Collectibles. But I'm not going to show them to you today. I'm going to save them for the next episode where I go over the new comic books from this particular new comic book day. The big ones, of course, being X-Men 97, the first issue coming out. Feral, number one, following up the Straight Dog success. And then Ultimate Spider-Man, number three. Now, there were some other great books that come out had come out as well. But I'm going to save all of that for the next episode. Because after I left Cards, Comics, and Collectibles, not only did I go... Not only did I buy comics there, I also stopped at two more LCSs in my area. One was having a huge 50% off discount on back issues for anything that was dated with the price sticker has a date, anything dated before March of 2024. So I know they have a pretty good backstop, but you have to dig through the boxes to find some things. And I found some things there, but I didn't pick up any new comics from that shop. But I will throw those books into the next episode's video as well. But the third stop was at Third Eye Comics in Annapolis, Maryland, where I buy most of my new comics because they buy in such bulk that they're able to get a lot of different variations and have some ratios as well. And you'll see all that in the next episode. So I'm going to save some of the books from today's show for the new comic book show in the next episode. But... That leaves us with, what did you get, Russ? Russ, what did you get when you walked in there? Well, as I was saying, I was the second person in line, and the first person in line was a friend of mine that I've gotten to know over the last year or so. He is a fellow YouTuber here in the Baltimore area. He is Rob from Cool Stuff Collectibles, and one of the best YouTubers here in the Baltimore area, and I've gotten to know him a little bit over the last couple, well, mostly over the last year. I've known about him for the last couple years because... 
I definitely follow the local YouTubers here in the area, and he's one of the big ones. So definitely look up to his channel and everything and enjoy talking with him all the time. He was the first person in line. Now, luckily, he was... I don't know what he ended up getting today, but I do know that he wasn't... He hadn't been there previously in the last week, or he hadn't been there for a while, so he was just looking around to see what he could find. So I knew I was going to be okay. As I said, I was going to go right to the boxes where I knew some of these keys were, and right off the bat, I found two of them back to back. In fact, I had honestly placed those two books, two of these books back to back. It was my two big books, honestly. I put them together so I would, hopefully they didn't get moved in the last few days, but I did place them in the box together so I knew where to look. The other ones I had to dig a little bit for, but let's just get into the books because these are great books right here. All right, we're going to start small because I didn't preview this book previously, but it is something I knew where it was. It was not the first book that I went to get. It was the last book, really. But I wanted to get this right here. It is the Harley Quinn 30th anniversary issue, square bound. It is the cover by Terry and Rachel Dotson. Now, why was this on the list? I have this, and I have it signed by Terry Dotson. He signed it to Baltimore Comic Con last year, and I... I had wanted to get Rachel to sign too. She was supposed to be there and she ended up not being there. So I only have Terry Dotson on here. Well, it turns out they're going to be having a CG sign, CGC signing with the two of them. And this is one of my favorite covers by Terry Dotson, especially that I want to get, I think I want to get this graded. So I bought another copy of this. I hope it's going to be okay because they have really got this thing stuffed into this bag and board, and I'm hoping the corners are going to be really good. But for only a few bucks, I thought this was a good pickup. And what was funny was when I was in line, and there was a big line with people who were checking out. Now, I spent a couple hours there, hours there, and there was still a line of people checking out. Right as you go up the line, you pass all of the Spider-Man boxes, and... I was digging through because I'm just standing there and I happened to run across this. This is Spider-Man and the Black Cat number one. I think it was a three-issue miniseries. And you got Terry and Rachel Dotson again. So I went ahead and picked up issue number one of that with the thought that I might actually get that one sent in as well. This is going to take a little bit of work and I don't know how it's going to do because I think it's got a cardstock cover. But... I probably should have looked better in the light when I was at the shop because there is there is some creases here that we'll see we'll see if we can work it out. If I can, I may send that in for the signing as well. If not, I may just save it for a signing in Baltimore. He, I know Terry's at one of the two, Heroes Con or Baltimore, I can't remember which, but I may save that for just an in-person signing at some point. So as I said, we're going to work our way up. Now, this is a book that I spotlighted in the preview video. It was a small book, but it is Countdown to Infinite Crisis. This right here has this beautiful Alex Ross cover. If I could have found this book in my PC for the Alex Ross, excuse me, the Alex Ross signing last year, I would have sent this in. I couldn't find it in time, so I didn't send it in. But Jeff Johns, who wrote this, and Rags Morales, who does the pencils, are going to both be at Fan Expo here in about a month or so in the beginning of May up in Philadelphia. Plus, Jeff Johns is actually going to be at Third Eye Comics here in the next week or so. And I th was thinking, okay, this is a great example of why... Nobody's going to be sending things to C CBCS anymore. I can get this signed in person by Rags Morales and Jeff Johns, and I can wait for another Alex Ross signing at CGC and at some point send this in. And we can have, at that point, it would be two verified signatures with one witnessed signature. I think that's going to ha how it eventually will work. And that's just another example of why you don't have to send your books to CBCS anymore. You can... With, with CGC buying JSA and having authenticators now, not having to rely on witness signatures, it's a one-stop shop. You can take everything to CGC at this point. So I picked that up. This is a really nice copy. I Actually, I really like this. This is a beautiful, beautiful cover. Anyway, those were the small books 
that I picked up. But I use this sale to get some big keys as long as the conditions are really good. And in my preview episode, I talked about these a little bit. So we'll, we'll go over them and repeat some of that information. So first up is this right here. It is Marvel Presents Bloodstone Number 1, a book that I never had on my PC when I was growing up. I had books from this era, tons of these books. Now, this came out in 1975, and I, as I said, I had a lot of books from this era, 73, 74, 75, and then it started. I started getting away from comics a little bit because just getting a little bit older, I wasn't going to town with my mom. We left out in the country so it's not like you can go to the you went to the drugstore every day or the grocery store every day you went once a week and that was the schedule we would go Saturday mornings and the drugstore and you say why do you go to the drugstore every week well I've got I had grandparents everybody everybody was on medication of some sort it seemed like we were always going to the drugstore every week and there was that's where you could find the comics. They weren't in the grocery store. They were in the in the drugstore. So maybe that's why I had some gaps in some of my comics that I ended up getting. Was maybe we didn't go quite every week to the drugstore. Just the uh, it was just the grocery store. But I never had this. And by the time I was it, by the time after this, be 1976, I was getting a little bit older, so I wasn't going to town quite as much anymore. But I was glad to finally get it in the PC now. I think when I did the preview on this, I said, I gave grades on this, 9.8s, 9.6s, 9.4s, 9.2s. Well, I'm going to go over that again. This right here does have a little bit of wear around the staples right up here, so it definitely won't be a 9.8. But 9.6s still have a little bit of value between $100 and $144. And those prices are recent sales, whether they were from mostly eBay or from Heritage usually. 9.4s dropped down $69 to $109, and a 9.2 actually went up a little bit, but the sales are a little bit older from the end of 2023, from $138 to $150. So there's a little bit of margin in here because I only ended up, after discount, I only paid $35 for this, and I still think it's in a really nice shape. Even with the wear right around the staple, the rest of the book is really nice. You've got sharp corners and you've got a clean spine, which is the main reason I bought that. Even with this wear, I think I'm still going to do pretty good on that, assuming I get it graded. All right, next up is a book. I love this book. I love the series. It is part of that goals list to get at least 9.4s across the board for the whole storyline, but I would be satisfied with at least the 9.0 at that stage. I don't want 8.5s, I want 9.0s or above, but the goal really, I guess, is at least a 9.4. It is the last story in the Thanos War with Captain Marvel. This is from 1974. You've got the, as I said, the last in the story. It is issues 26 through 33, and I've gotten this graded. I don't know what my grade is, to be honest. I think it's a 9.0, but I am still would love to get 9.4 on this. And I think this ha this shot, this comic right here has a real good shot at that. You've got clean corners, which are very dark right here. They're clean corners, and you've got a pretty clean spine. And what's nice is you've got a little bit of that white cover coming around on the front on the spine, so you're not necessarily going to get a color breaking spine tick up along the edge right there so definitely that was really good i only spent another 35 dollars on this book right here and we'll see we'll see how this goes we'll get it in the shop we'll give it a clean and press if i don't if it ends up having some other damage that i don't think it's going to merit out anything above a nine two at probably at the lowest i don't even know if i'd get it graded if i thought it was going to be a nine oh I may just keep it in the PC and I may end up reselling it down the line. But right now, I think this could merit out to anywhere from a 9.2 to a 9.6. Let me give you some prices on some recent sales on that. 9.6s went for, go for about $260. 9.4s, anywhere from 100 to 150. And a 9.2 actually went for 150. So a little bit of range on that 9.4, but people sell things for at different times for different reasons. So 
It's not a bad range, and especially at $35, I think I've got some margin in it, considering I think this book is still really good. Even even with 9.0, I think it would still do pretty good on this. All right. Start to get some bigger, even bigger books right here. I did get the Batman 235. Of course, you've got Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams doing this book and this run. It was just fantastic. And I don't remember actually ever seeing this copy before. I'm not, I hadn't really grown up reading any of the Neil Adams books. I've read some of the reprints and some of the bigger issues. This is not necessarily the the big key that the first appearance of her or even Ra's al Ghul, either one of them. It's not the big books, but any of the Neil Adams Batman books are really good. And when I saw this in the shop, when I did the preview show, I was looking at it, I'm going, you know, this is actually really nice. The corners are nice and sharp. There's no spine ticks. And this is from 1971. And so they have got this thing where back in the time they do this edge. It looks like it's the, if it was a square bound book, that edge right there, I, and I'm not, I tell you, I've got the camera set, so I don't think it's going to, if I go forward, it's not going to focus. But know that there's no, color coming around the spine there. There's no spine ticks. And it's just an interesting spine. You'll have to do a close-up. Whenever you guys get a chance, take a look at this, this book online and you'll see what I'm talking about with this spine and how they do this, this edge right here. Anyway, it's a really good book. I ended up spending $56 on this book. And this is the one that kind of shocked me because I think it's in really good shape and it has some potential. I think it's going to merit out anywhere from an 8.5 to a 9.2. I could be surprised on that. I Hopefully I'm not shocked on that in the bad way. But 8.5s have recently gone for $235 up to $400. While a 9.0, 468 to 570 and even a 9.2 went for over $1,200, anywhere from $350 to $1,200. I mean, that's some crazy money for this book right here. We will get this into the shop probably a little sooner than the ones that you, I, the other books I just showed you. That has a lot of potential right there. And I think $56 for this was a good buy. I think this so far is the best buy I've had so far. All right, two more books left. And I've actually got a couple extra things here too, but two main books left and I couldn't pass it up. The condition was too good, too good to pass up at this price. And it is Noon Teen Titans number two from December of 1980. It is the first appearance of Death, Deathstroke the Terminator. I was going to say Deathlock. I had that in my mind. Deathstroke the Terminator. And this is a super clean copy. It has a clean spine up and down right here. You got clean edges. This is a book that I have targeted and I have picked up and I've I've got a signed copy by George Perez. It was I sent that to CBCS and we talked about that a little bit ago and I may break that out and take it with me to Baltimore when Marv Wolfman shows up there and have him his signature added to that and then send the whole book into CGC to have verified because that was my intention when I bought that book it was already signed by George Perez they did not advertise it as being signed by him they had some other name and I'm going that's a George Perez signature and it graded out pretty good it was a 9.2 from CBCS which I was slightly disappointed in I was hoping for at least a 9.4 and, but with the signature on there, verified that it was George Perez. My plan was then to take that book with me to Baltimore, have CBCS crack it open, and add Marv Wolfman to it. Well, now things have changed. And as I was talking about CBCS, or excuse me, CGC buying JSA, and they can authenticate signatures. Well, that book's going to go and end up going to CGC at this point. So again, I don't know what CBCS is going to do at this point, but that's, it is what it is, guys. Anyway, this was, I said, a really good book. Now, yes, I spent $140 on this book. This is a book that was going for $200 all day long at Heroes Con last year. I saw multiple copies of this book being sold and in this in this condition and slightly 
less than this condition, $200 all day long. So I think this was a good pickup. It's more than I kind of wanted to spend, but it, I think it's a really good pickup at that price, and I'm going to have a lot of margin in that. Now, I'm still going to, I got to get that 9.6, so I'm not going to have a lot of margin if it's a 9.6 and I decide to sell it, but a 9.8, and I think it has a lot of potential for that, is somewhere between a $650 and $700 book. So that's the risk. I took, I took a big chance on this one right here. I don't think I'm going to end up losing money on it. I just think it... It's a little bit chancy. I'm, I'm shooting for the brass ring on this one a little bit more than the others. All right, last book up, last big book up. And let's set these down for a second. And this right here is a book I never had. I had the issue right after it. And then I had his first solo series, um, his own title solo series. But this was his first solo adventure. It is Marvel Spotlight number 28. And this is Moon Knight, his first solo series. I had never had this book. And this is a book right here. I think the condition is fantastic. Enough so that I listed out grades ranging from a 9.8 down to a 9.2. 9.8s have gone for almost $1,400. 9.6s really dropped down. But it's, I've seen it go for as little as 150 That was maybe an outlier. Up to 450, 9.4s, 275, 9.2s, 225. I think I'm going to make off on this one really good because I think this is in really nice shape. I spent 105 on this, and man, it is a it is a really nice copy. I'm looking over here and I'm not finding a lot of defects at all. I'm not saying it, I'm not saying it's perfect. A lot of these older books you might find soft edges and things like that, but I'm not finding spine ticks, I'll tell you that. It's a really nice book, and I'm kind of excited about this. Again, this comes from an era where, 1976, where I was not going, as I said earlier, not going to the grocery store or the drug stores as often. It wasn't probably until around 1980 that I started going out and getting, buying comics again locally, and at that point, the only place to pick them up at that point was to go to the local hospital, the gift shop there. And that was a lot of fun because we'd go, my granddad and I would travel around on Sundays and see, visit some of his family. And we would stop at the, at the hospital. I'd run to the gift shop and pick up a handful of comics. So that was always a lot of fun. But there was a gap between probably somewhere between the end of 75 and 1980 that I lost track of a lot of comics. I didn't have a lot of these in the PC at that point. But I'm happy to finally have this and ha happy to see what kind of potential this eventually will have. Um, well, it has a lot of potential now, but we'll see what we end up with. But those were the big books that I picked up from the big sale, the big Easter sale at Cards, Comics, and Collectibles. But that wasn't it. As I said before, we did not, I did not, I am not showing you the new comic books I picked up from, from this particular new comic book day. We'll save that for the next episode. But I did pick up a couple of other things. And this is relatively new, but not right off the, the new comics of the week. This is I Heart... Let me get this right. I Heart Skull Crusher number one. I think this is the regular cover. And there's a variant cover that's hitting the top 10 of cover price right now. Now, I didn't see that there at this particular shop, but I tell you, I when I went to Third Eye Comics, as I said earlier, they have a lot of ratios, and I thought I might find that one there, but we'll cover that in the next video. So, I did pick this up, and one thing they did have on New Comic Book Day, they have a box up at the front where they end up having packs of comics. There's three comics in these packs that you can have for free. For everybody who buys something, you can pick up a pack. And I thumbed through for a little bit, and I pretty much stopped on the, this one right here. It is, let's see, Uncanny Avengers number one. You got the Joe, is it, it's um, John Cassidy. I was going to go Joe Cassidy. John Cassidy artwork right there. And it has Avengers number 23 on the other side. And I think I might have actually needed this. I knew there was something I was missing in that Avengers run with Jason Aaron. I wasn't sure if this was it or not, but I kind of said, okay, well, let's 
I'm going to go ahead and get that. It's free. Let's open it up real quick and see what the other comic was. We'll take the tape off so we don't have any problems with that. But let's see what we got there. We've got the cover right there. And I didn't mind picking this up. I know I have it in my PC, but I know that John Cassidy is going to be at the, I believe it's the Baltimore Comic Con this year, and I'm starting to compile stuff, even this early. That show isn't until, I, can't, I don't know if it's September or October, but we're months and months out. And I've already started compiling books for that show and for Heroes Con. So maybe we'll do an episode on that at some point. Here's that Avengers number 23. And, okay, so we got Avengers number 22 right there with that storyline with the Ghost Riders. So, yeah, that wasn't bad. Not bad for a free little pack, but we'll put those down so we can end with the really big book right there. Here, put that right there. But anyway, guys, that is it. That is everything I picked up at this big sale. Hopefully you guys will give Cars, Comics, and Collectibles a chance. Stop by if you're ever in the Baltimore area. Great shop. And the owner of the shop is the one who started the Baltimore Comic Con, and he runs that every year. I just mentioned it before. I mentioned it several times in the video. So they do a great job with the show, and there's a lot of great guests that are coming this year. So hopefully you guys will get a chance to visit the area, come to the con, go to... The shop will probably be closed during the con, so it's going to be a little hard to do that. But know that they have... They set up at the con as well, and they have a huge booth with a lot of books there too. So you'll do pretty good by visiting the Baltimore Comic Con, but if you're ever anytime other than that, definitely stop in Reisterstown, Maryland, and stop by the shop. But that's it, guys. That's enough of my plug for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think of the books that I have ended up picking up. Let me know if you think I made good deals on this. And if you're ever interested in anything that I ever have on my channel, definitely reach out to me at collectorauctions at yahoo.com or DM me on my Instagram account. You can currently see what I have for sale in my eBay store or on my short box page by clicking any of the links down in the description down below. So that's it, guys. Enough of the sales pitch. I'm out of here. You have a great day. I will see you for the next episode. It's going to be a review of the comics I picked up for this particular new comic book day, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. So stay tuned for that for the next episode. Until then, guys, remember, every comic has a story.